Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Purser, Dan Purser, MD, and we're going to change the math on your health. Let's look at this. This is a genetics primer video one. We told you about in our little genetics uh, example, the two little babies and their, um, their issues with inflammation. Lesson one, introduction. Who am I? Dan Purser, I'm an MD. Occasionally I think I'm a naturopath. I d I've done years of endocrinology research, currently in the cosmetic surgery group. I deal with complex wound issues and get to the root causes. Root causes being the key phrase there. I practice in Linden, Utah. I'm a world educator and speaker and author. I've had a number one book on genetics the last couple of years, uh, 15 number one books overall, a textbook on preventive medicine. I've written a ton. Also educate all over the world. The selfie was taken in Tokyo near my hotel. I've spoken to fans in over 50 countries in every state more than once. Search online, Dan Purser, MD. You can find me in Borneo, Brisbane, Australia, Mexico, wherever. Uh, this year, my goal is to educate more physicians. I partner with WorldLink Medical and to accomplish this and other, other feats. So get ready. This is my full AMA disclosure. I'm a 30-year member, actually 34 years now. I'm recording this for public to see the... Um, uh, no charge, my gift to society. I've written, also written books on the on the genetic medical errors we're discussing. All this is my own medical opinion, not officially representative of any of my companies. Not selling any products in this video. The video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please don't use the information contained in this course to treat yourself. Please consult with a knowledgeable physician in your area before starting any treatment as might possibly be suggested in this course. I'll not be held responsible if anything goes wrong. So be careful. Thanks. End of lesson one. Lesson two, a medical paradigm shift. First, no more band-aids. Like giving an amphetamine for chronic fatigue syndrome. That's a band-aid. Or giving an antidepressant for depression when you could usually find the cause of depression in genetics or nutritional issues. What's the actual cause of the fatigue? What's the actual cause of depression? Start looking for doctors who practice root cause medicine. Or if you're a physician, start practicing root cause medicine, please. Get it from here on out. You're going to look for that root cause of the fatigue or the depression. Think twice. Or the anxiety. Please take the time to dive or dig deeper to really question the why. Why am I depressed? Why am I anxious? Why is my son uh, fatigued all the time? He's 17. There's a landmark uh, study in JAMA in 1998 uh, that Stanford did. And it's where they questioned more than a thousand patients as they were leaving physicians' offices. What they found is that 69% of those patients wanted more natural options, more natural therapies. Um, if you repeated that study today, I would guess it'd probably be 89% or higher. That's how much it's changed. And doctors didn't pay attention to that then, and they're not listening or paying attention to it now. Well, I hear you, and this is what we're looking for. Naysayers are insurance companies, uh, Cleveland Clinic, other places. This is an article by Kerosene. It's the number two thing that comes up on Google when people search for MTHFR. It's just, it's just really not, how do I say this? Politely, she's genetically ignorant, even though she's probably a geneticist. She doesn't know much about MTHFR or the issues that occur. She's never seen a spectra cell. I'll show you plenty in that uh, long... Um, hour and a half or hour and 10 minute video where we go through the genetic tests on those two little kids. In other words, the homocysteine level determines our actions, not the empty to our test results. Right. How about symptoms? How about signs? How about intracellular vitamin and mineral levels? Okay. Confusing. The big boys say the future is gen genetic medicine, but then they say it's not. Which is it? Maybe it's just the type of genetic medicine that they control or can do, not what the average primary care can do. What I'm going to teach you is about specific genetic errors that have been passed down to you from hundreds of generations ago when the mutation first occurred and how those genetic how those genetic errors affect your body's ability to function properly path, uh, physiologically and pathologically. Ugh. Genetic errors you carry affect you. These are not mutations. What you carry are transcription errors. You, can, you carry errors passed down from many generations ago when they originally occurred. This was the original mutation. When they originally occurred, that was when the mutation occurred, not, not with you. These, so these copies of mutations from hundreds or thousands of years ago, your ancestors have all carried these too. 
These were transcribed over and over and over until your parents gave them to you. Now the world and our diet habits have changed and we live longer too. So we can suffer more too. But our ancestors were tough when we just don't know how much um, know how much and how they suffered every day. We have not a clue. End lesson two. Lesson three, terminology and definitions. A rose by any other name would smell sweet. Well, MTHFR by any other name is still MTHFR. So MTHFR, an acronym, stands for Methylene Tetrahydrofolate Reductase Enzyme Deficiency Disease. So uh, should be MTHFR EDD. I'm the one who came up with that term. We'll see if it sticks. Technically not a mutation. Technically a replication or transcription error. Some Vikings 600 to 1,000 generations ago uh, back had uh, the original mutation. You just had the error. Lucky you. And there it is. It's difficult to form a 5-MTHF where your what your body definitely needs to continue the methylation pathway. What does it mean not to methylate correctly? So on its surface, it's just a deficiency of 5-10-methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme. Uh, but really, it's a lot more. This makes more medical sense than this slide. Uh, MTHFR errors prevent conversion of nasty, foul, bad homocysteine to glutathione. Glutathione is amazing and good. High homocysteine is diagnostic of MTHFR and very bad. See, homocysteine gets directly, almost directly converted. Well, it's like a three or four step process to glutathione. If your glutathione level is low, you can't detox, you can't fight viruses, you can't fight a lot of things. I can make them spin too. So these genetic errors we're discussing are each known to specifically decrease the functionality of certain enzymes. This decrease can be in the amount produced or in the percentage of functional versions of the enzymes created. See? At the basic level, we're discussing symptomatology too. The number one symptom I see of MTHFR is fatigue. I also see depression and anxiety too, a lot of it. So MTHFR is about never having enough energy. Tired all the time. Thus the popularity of five-hour energy drinks. And why Utah is the Prozac capital of the world is because 85% of the people here have MTHFR. Why you might be tired. This is a normal human. So you take in one carbohydrate molecule, consider that crude oil from the ground. That's on the left. On the right, you'd create 32 ATP. The carbohydrate goes through the Krebs cycle. You can't use it directly, so it's got to be converted to unleaded gasoline on the right. So the crude oil from the ground goes through the cell, through the nucleus, through the mitochondria, through the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria, and comes out as 32 ATP, refined or unleaded gasoline that we can burn. That's our energy coin of our realm, ATP. But if you're homozygous for C677T, the worst MTHFR, your one carbohydrate comes out as 9 or 10, ATP. They are always behind. I've seen patients who are creating only one or two ATP. And they are exhausted beyond belief. They're sad human beings. My goal is to get people up around to the 30, 31, 32 ATP. So this is the most critical slide in this video, this course, this this PowerPoint, whatever. Heterozygous means only one snip or error of the allele is present. Not as bad as two or homozygous errors. Homozygous means the genetic error is fully realized. It means the two of the errors are present. You got one from each parent. c 6 7 t the worst. So all this is really on gene 1. Can you believe this? Wait until they get to gene 5 or 6. We're only now getting to gene 4 in the research. So at the 677 position on gene 1, the cytosine has been replaced with a thymine. Most common MTHFR error and the worst one. So reduce the production by 30 to 35%. Of the 510 MTHFR, the reductase enzyme, having one error means they they only have 23 ATP per carbohydrate versus the usual 32 ATP. ATP remembers then a lot of gas for humans. Uh, cause of reduction, so two of them makes it even worse. You're going to have nine or ten or eleven errors, or ATP. Sorry, error most associated with hyperhomocysteinemia, high homocysteine level. Boom, boom. Boom and boom. See the pathway to the right, right? You saw it. A1298. See, I have one of these. So I'm heterozygous. Having one is not supposed to be affect methylation. That's wrong. It does. It uses BH42. Not that we can do anything about that. Causes neurotransmitter problems. Causes anxiety associated with schizophrenia when they can't turn their brains off due to too much norepinephrine. COM-T, which we'll also talk a lot about 
in that course with the two little kids. Uh, one functional cleans up excess to dopamine and norepinephrine. Cannot break these neurotransmitters down if carriers, if the person carries or is homozygous, at least not completely. These people tend to have very high level of neurotransmitters. Their brains cannot shut down. They tell, tell me that brains can't shut off. Tend to be OCD, obsessive compulsive. Tend to have anxiety and cannot sleep while they're laying there. Can't turn their brains off. Much worth much worse when they have the homozygous MAOA R297R with it, which we'll talk about next. Get small doses of lithium orotate, 5 milligrams to increase COM T production. Also, magnesium. Also, B6. Also, uh, adenosyl hydroxycobalamin. MTRR errors, key in the methylation cycle. You're going to see a lot of these errors when uh, Mike Clark and I talk uh, about those two young, young kids. These are necessary to regenerate methyl B12 for use by MTR. Mutation can cause shortage, suggesting the need for more B12. So we treat it with additional methylcobalamin. Not cyanocobalamin, it's made with cyanide, but with methylcobalamin, 1,000 to 5,000 micrograms. Maybe even adenosyl or hydroxycobalamin, like we use with COMT. GSTP1, I105V. I know a lot about glutathione. We developed the only functional version ever on the entire planet. We have a patent on it. Uh, we're taking it through the FDA. Especially if homozygous can cause you to use it if you reduce glutathione. Just say it's too quickly and so we'll always be low. Lack of glutathione increases toxin and metal overloads. Increases risk for cancer. MEOA R297R I mentioned earlier. Also called the warrior gene because potential for increased agitation. Combine that with two homozygous COMT errors and wow. I have a patient with seven COMT errors and MAOA error. It's off the charts anxious. And COMT also causes increased risk for breast cancer. So seven of them is crazy. 1,400% uh, increased risk for her to have breast cancer. So those breakdown of serotonin can lead to high levels of neurotransmitters. Uh, requires B2. So use it in treatment. Associated with mood swing, aggressive behavior, depression, anxiety, OCD. Also treat with progesterone. Women love the progesterone because it calms them down. Men, I'm always touchy about giving them progesterone because it can also cause vascular inflammation, but I'll give them a little bit at night to help them sleep. And more on the MAOR, uh, MAOA, R297R, sorry. Intolerance of methylfolate. Treat with riboflavin and progesterone. Lithium orotate. I never do the raw wolfy with serpentina. I should probably try it. VDR tack. You have burned through your D3 a lot more quickly. And so you got to give them a large amounts of ADK, vitamin ADK. You'll see this too in lesson three. Thanks for listening. Now you have an idea, kind of what we're going to be talking about. A little terminology for you. Please watch the primer, uh, genetics, genetics primer video too by Mike Clark. It's even got more details in it. A lot of his concepts, stuff like this. I'm more for the, the mechanics and Mike's more for the concepts, ideas, and what's out there and, and the data that's out there for the public. If you like this uh, video, please let others know. Also, a Google review or thumbs up or down does not hurt. You're just paying it forward. Good luck.